This episode of Fearless Rebel Radio is brought to you by Fabuplus Magazine, the world's only body positive health, fitness, and lifestyle magazine with weight neutral content dedicated to the everyday woman. Fabuplus Magazine celebrates women and fosters a sense of belonging with content that relates to women of every size. I love this magazine because it is so refreshing to see a magazine with body diversity. And you can get 40% off your subscription by going to summerinandin.com forward slash Fabuplus and entering code SUMMER40, that's S-U-M-M-E-R-4-0, at checkout. This is Fearless Rebel Radio, a podcast about body positivity, self-worth, anti-dieting, and feminism. I am your host, Summer Inanin, a professionally trained coach specializing in body image, self-worth, and confidence, and the best-selling author of Body Image Remix. If you're ready to break free of societal standards and stop living behind the number on your scale, then you have come to the right place. Welcome to the show. This is episode 109, and I am sharing the mic with Sarah Vance, my co-host for the Reclaim Retreat. We are blowing up the three most common body positivity myths, including why you don't need to love your body and why disliking parts of yourself is perfectly normal. We also tell you everything you need to know about the Reclaim Retreat. You can find all the links and resources mentioned in this episode at summerinandin.com forward slash 109. Before we begin, I have two quick announcements. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this show via iTunes or whatever platform you use to listen to podcasts. And if you haven't already done so, please leave a review for this show like this one from Buffy. I love this podcast. I've learned so much from it about dealing with food issues, how to let go and go with the flow with food. If you struggle with food issues or body image issues, this is a good podcast for you. Thank you so much, Buffy. Leaving a review helps others to find this show and the information that you are learning here. You can do that by going to iTunes, searching for Fearless Rebel Radio, then click ratings and reviews and click to leave a review or give it a rating. Second, don't forget, you can grab the free 10 day body confidence makeover at summerinandin.com forward slash freebies with 10 steps to take right now to feel better in your body. Today, I am sharing the mic with Sarah Vance. Sarah Vance is a coach who focuses on body image, self worth, and helping others become embodied within their lives. She helps women all over the world to reclaim their power back from diet culture and reconnect with who they are so they can show up unapologetically and powerfully in who they are. She is the host of the Reclaiming You podcast, creator of the Breaking Boundaries program, and rebel behind the F Your Fitspo movement. Her work centers around anti-dieting, body positivity, health at every size, and feminism. Sarah and I always jive so well together, which is obviously why we paired up to run the Reclaim Retreat, and you'll see why we get along so well and share so many of the same beliefs and values in this episode. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Check it out. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Summer. (laughs) Now your podcast is going to start with Hey, Sarah. (laughs) (laughs) That's totally fine. You know, it's fine. This is it's a collaboration between two of us today. So it's all good. Welcome to our shows. (laughs) Yes. Welcome to our shows. The dual S and S squared is what it is today. S squared. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to we're going to start out by just pumping up our retreat a bit because we're super excited about that. And it's a countdown to the early bird price ending. And then we're going to be getting into the three body positive or body image myths that we want to blow up and some of the stuff that relates to what we work on in the retreat. Absolutely. And, you know, we're really pumped about this retreat for ourselves as well. And we want you guys to be excited about it, too. So, you know, like she said, we're going to be diving into some of those myths that we so often see um, around this body acceptance, body positive movement. And when we work with our clients individually. But let's talk about the retreat first, Summer. So in case you are unfamiliar with what's going on, Summer and I are holding the Reclaim Retreat that is going to be going down in my hometown, which is Asheville, North Carolina. And 
that's going to be this May, the 10th through the 12th. So some of you may be unfamiliar with Asheville. So let me just give you a little rundown of what Asheville is like. First of all, it's an amazing city. I mean, I stumbled across Asheville. Let's see, I visited this town once and I decided I was going to pick up my entire life and move it here. So if that doesn't tell you how awesome it is, then I don't know what will. But it's surrounded by um, mountains. It's right along the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, so if you're familiar with that, it's basically the Smoky Mountains, I think. The Appalachian Trail runs through it. So it's completely beautiful. And Asheville is like its own little unique little tiny town in North Carolina. So it's surrounded by all this mountain area. And then you have this little tiny bubble pocket, which is just full of like just a wide range of diverse amazing minds. I mean, it really is just a very cool vibe, very artistic. It's very, you know, up to times as far as the political nature of what we often talk about, Summer and I. And it's really just a great city. If you love beer, you're going to love it here. It's the beer capital of the uh, the country, I think, of the U.S., actually. So there's a lot of microbreweries, um, a lot of art, a lot of music, and a lot of really just like cool vibes, in all honesty. It's a little hippie town, so it's really awesome. And if you're into the outdoors, there's lots of hiking and outdoor stuff too, right? Like that's yeah, that's yeah. What I so the, yeah, there's so much stuff to do outside. Outside because, like I said, that Blue Ridge Parkway, which is like runs from I don't know, it like runs states long, and the Appalachian Trail runs through this town as well. Asheville actually was founded because it was a hiking town. That's actually like where it originated from because it's a little, little tiny hiking town. And then it kind of, everybody came here and it became more popular. So ton of hiking. Like I said, you can hop on the Blue Ridge Parkway, uh, which the place that we're holding the retreat is not far from uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway. And you, there's like so much hiking to do and just beautiful views. And if you saw the pictures of the area that we're going to be staying in, you will see what we're talking about. I mean, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. I can't wait to go. I can't wait to explore. I think it's like just the kind of environment that feeds your soul. And it should be really beautiful there in May, right? Like it should be nice. And yeah, yeah, it's not going to be too hot. It's not going to be too cold. This is when all the, you know, flowers and stuff are going to start blooming a lot of nourishing things and everybody's coming back to life from the winter. So yeah, it's going to be pretty awesome. It's it's a really good time to come. It's actually going to be almost a year to the date of when I moved here. So celebration to us. Yes. To me, yes, yes. And it's yes. actually a year to the date almost from our set or our last retreat that we held too. So it's exciting. Retreat number yeah. two, it's going to be amazing. So we'll tell you a little bit about it and who who it's for. I mean, this is for pretty much anyone who wants more for themselves than dieting and fixating on their body, but wants some support and a fun time and a really awesome community vibe with a small group of women to work through this stuff. And it's really for anyone at any stage in their in their journey. So Last time we had people who had been working on this stuff for a couple of years and they'd even done some private coaching with with us and they got tons out of this. And then we had people who were totally new to this or had only been working on it for, you know, a couple months. And, uh, you know, all the stuff that we do with you over the course of the two and a half days is about meeting you where you're at. So you're going to get a ton out of it, regardless of the work that you've done leading up to it. And it's really for you if you just feel like there's more for you in life and with yourself and you want to be more unapologetic and really have a solid belief in who you are and how you show up in this world and just go forward creating more space for yourself metaphorically and literally in your life. Yeah, absolutely. And just like we say, you know, reclaim your worth and rock your life. That's exactly what this retreat is about. And just like she said, it's for everybody. Everybody is willing to come. But I mean, okay, so who is it not for? I guess that's a, a better kind of question because we say it's for everybody. But who is it not for? So if you're like not, you know, into having fun, then you're probably not going to want to come to our retreat. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you if you enjoy being bored, and if if you cannot be around people who swear, 
Yeah, that's also also very true it's because we, we <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and, uh, you know, if you are familiar with Summer and I individually and some of our work together, because we've done a few things together, a few episodes together, you know that we just like to have a really good time. And that's exactly what this is about. So if you're not into that, then, you know, this probably isn't going to be for you. And also, if you are like actively seeking weight loss, then this is probably not going to be for you. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's I mean, every everybody is welcome as but you know, if you don't like having fun, then you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just sorry. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, let's talk about what what people will learn. And this is gonna tie into the rest of the stuff in the episode. So we could probably keep this really short. Yeah. So basically what you're going to be learning is tools to take back with you and right there with you to basically just amp up you. I mean, that's really what this whole, all this work is about is to really like really reclaim your worth and amp up who you are. So it goes beyond, you know, body image. It's definitely something that Summer and I talk about and discuss, but it goes beyond that. It's really about reclaiming your sense of self-worth and knowing who you are and being able to have tools with you to combat self-doubt, to work through limiting beliefs, to start, you know, stepping outside of your comfort zone and really just living life and really embracing whatever that is for you. I picture everybody showing up with a metaphorical suitcase of baggage that holds all the limiting beliefs, all the fears, all the shoulds, all the expectations, all the doubt. And we essentially unpack all of that and you leave feeling so much lighter and freer. That's the best way that I can describe it. And just more uninhibited, unapologetic. It's amazing. We burn that shit down. That's for sure. Literally. Literally. (laughs) If there's a fire, I think there's a fire. So yes, yes, we do. Yes. (laughs) And there's lots of social time too. So you're hanging out with the other people at the retreat. You're hanging out with us. There's lots of time for reflection to really think about these things and have tools for the future. So if you're an introvert, don't worry. You get lots of time to yourself and to reflect as well. It's kind of however you want to do it. There's there's periods of time where you can choose to, you know, collaborate more, be in a group, uh, socialize, or you know, go off and sit by on on the patio looking out into the mountains, just thinking about what you've been taught or something that you've had a realization that you've had about yourself. And you get a ton of one-on-one support from us too. Yeah. And that's the other really beautiful thing about the way this is set up is because you get things within a group setting, but you also get one-on-one coaching and support on top of that. So a lot of the things that Summer and I will be covering is stuff that we really use for our one-on-one you know, clients. So that's an additional thing that you get. And plus the support in the community that you have right there, like a lot of us, you know, you're either in Summer's community or in my community or both. And it's really great to have those online, but taking it out into like real life and having like tangible people where you can share a space. It just, there's something really special and powerful about that. Yes. Yes. Should we read a couple testimonials? Yes. Go for it. Okay. This one's from Annie. The Reclaim Retreat was an amazing, she put that in caps, experience that has enhanced my body positive journey. I'm almost two years into this work. The lessons learned, journaling opportunities, and relationships formed with the other women at the retreat are irreplaceable. It's hard to do this work by yourself. Podcasts and coaching are great, but only go so far. Immersing myself in it was the scariest and best choice I could have made for myself. Sarah and Summer are incredibly wise, kind, and compassionate, not to mention they have killer dance moves. I'd recommend this experience. (laughs) to anyone. (laughs) Thank you, Annie. Thanks, Annie. And then there's one from Lisa too. Do you have it or do you want me to read it? No, I don't have it. Go ahead. Okay. It was the best retreat I've ever been on and I've been on quite a few. It was a lot of mental work and super uncomfortable at times, feeling my feelings, ugh, but well worth the effort. I learned so much about myself, lifted a lot of shame that I didn't even know I had. And through all that, Summer and Sarah still managed to make it really fun. I had an awesome time. That's from Lisa, if I didn't say that already. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. And that's, I love that she pointed that out because that's one of something I wanted to say, you know, some of this work can be, you know, deep and heavy, but 
Summer and I really do. I do have to give us props, Summer. Summer and I do a really good job at balancing this level of lighthearted funness with also like doing some deep like healing work, having that balance and ebb and flow. So it's really, it's such a good thing. So great. I love it. Yeah, I I totally agree. So you can get more details at reclaimretreat.com. And we will both link to that in our respective show notes for this episode. And the early bird price ends January 30th, where you can save 150 bucks. So get on that now. Yep. Right now. Right now. Right now, right now. It's going to be great. It is going to be great. I can't wait to do it again. It was honestly one of the biggest highlights from last year. I was, I was, I kind of went into January just feeling really down because it's always just hard after, you know, being away and getting back into the swing of things. And so I started to think about my highlights of 2017. And, and I was like, that retreat was such a highlight. It was such an amazing moment in my life and I'll never forget it. And I'm so excited that we get to do it again. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, I'm just so excited to meet more amazing human beings. Like, you know, I'm excited to see Summer again and then I get to meet all new people. Like, it's just, I mean, what's better than that in all reality in a beautiful place? Like, come on. I'm it's so good. It was so, so good. It's going to be great. All right. Anything else? Should we move forward? Let's move forward. Okay. We're going to talk about three myths that we see pop up a lot when it comes to doing this work. And we want to unpack them and blow them up and talk about our different perspectives on them and how we teach around these things. So it's going to be great. Yep. Yep. So (laughs) the first myth that we really want to dive into is that being body positive means you quote unquote, love your body. Yes. This one is very common. Very, very common. We see it all over social media. This is what a lot of blogs and things. And, you know, I I would say that, you know, in the beginning stages, I was guilty of this too, but it means that you love your body. So what you want to dive into that a little bit, Summer? Yeah, sure. So I'll let's let me break down what I see and what we see. And uh, that is that you have to love every single thing about your body and yourself, like like your body. And I think, you know, if we if we think about that, from what we see, we see a lot of images on social media of people really embracing their appearance, which makes sense because social media is a visual platform. But I think often what I find is people think it means that you're ultimately going to find yourself attractive and you're going to find yourself, quote unquote, beautiful. And when I use beauty in that sense, what I'm really saying is prettiness, because I, I kind of see beauty as a totally different thing now. But we go into it thinking, well, I want to find myself pretty. <laughs> you know, that's how we that's how we translate love your body. It's so much more than that. I think it's it's not really about liking the way that you look. I think that sometimes that's the cherry on top, but really it's about cultivating this deep sense that you that you are worthy and that you are valuable. And you know, it's you don't have to be pretty. Like prettiness is not your power. I often think that the things that we traditionally consider ugly are actually the most beautiful things about ourselves. So vulnerability, emotions, honesty, you know, all of these things that we kind of try to hide. And, Imperfection. And, yeah, that we're ashamed of are really the things that make us most beautiful. And so, you know, I, I I said this once before, but I want you to not care about your body so you can go and do beautiful things and you can notice the beauty in the world and admire the inner beauty of others and create beauty with your words, creativity and acts of kindness. Like that is what it means to really uh, cultivate a sense of, of worthiness. So I think we've both kind of moved away from using the expression quote unquote, love your body, because we know it's so much deeper. We know it's so much deeper than that. And it's not about liking the way you look. It's it, it's just this whole other level of appreciation for who you are. 
Right. And the other thing about that specific statement, so in addition to what we're visually seeing, which is a lot of body centric post, um, is we're visually seeing bodies and even the statement, love your body, it's really body centered. And the real work is getting further away from like having so much emphasis on your body and really understanding, like Summer was saying, who you are and then having your body just like be <laughs> like, it's just, you think less and less of it. So that's another thing that I see is that you you, it's, it's always about your body and it's always about, you know, thinking it's about every single part of your body that you have to love every single part of your body, which we'll dive into that a little bit later as well. The other thing that I see quite frequently is that it means that you're going to be confident all the time in your body, that you're never going to be feeling difficult emotions, that you're never going to be hurt by criticism, that you're never going to be judged, that you're never going to have, you know, emotional discomfort. And that's just not the reality of the situation. Even when you do quote unquote, love your body, and we'll get into what that actually is, and how we explain it, when you actually do get to that level, that doesn't have that that doesn't mean that you're going to be absent of those things. Those things are existing no matter what. It's just a matter of learning how to navigate those through those emotions. So now that we kind of understand the myth, and maybe why it shows up and exactly what that is, let's talk about what is your take on, you know, love, loving your body? What does that mean for you, Summer? Yeah. Can I just add one more thing to what you were saying before about not being confident Absolutely. all the time? Yeah. I think we have to be really careful that we're not applying the magical thinking of dieting to body acceptance and body positivity. I think that's like we, we've we been trained to kind of have this way of thinking where we think, okay, if I do this, then everything in my life is going to be perfect. And we have to be really critical of the way that we're thinking about this process. Like we we're talking about being more loyal to our values, our beliefs, who we are, that's actually going to open ourselves up to more vulnerability and potentially criticism and judgment. But sometimes those biggest acts of self love are can be the most painful. And so it's about accepting the discomfort that comes with that. So I just I just wanted to add to that little piece. But I'll talk about the, you know, what we define as love and and I'll give my perspective first. You know, I I use the quote from Brene Brown in my book and it and it is we cultivate love when we allow our most vulnerable and powerful selves to be deeply seen and known. And when we honor the spiritual connection that grows from that offering with trust, respect, kindness, and affection, shame, blame, disrespect, and betrayal damage the roots from which love grows. Love can only survive these injuries if they are acknowledged, healed, and rare. And so I love that definition. And she's talking about that as it relates to the relationship between two people, but we can take that and apply it to ourselves. And I, you know, what really pops out to me is the words uh, trust, respect, kindness, affection, and I'll add in there compassion, and I'll also add unconditional. And I think that those are really what we need to be focusing on when we're talking about quote unquote, loving our bodies. It's about cultivating this relationship with ourselves and leading with those aspects and being aware and working through any time that we are shaming ourselves, blaming ourselves, disrespecting and disrespecting ourselves and trying to unpack those things so that we just become more compassionate and accepting of who we are in totality, knowing that no, none of us have our shit together, which I think you actually just posted a I mean, yeah. about like two days ago, yeah. which <laughs> so with poop um, emojis, yeah, it was yeah, great. so it's relevant, but <laughs> but understanding that that's you know that's really what makes us human. Yeah. And so just to kind of piggyback off of um, Summer's definition of love is, you know, when I was really trying to articulate this idea around loving our body, you know, I really reflected back on some of the, my relationships with people that I do really love. And, you know, when it comes to love, I think sometimes we have this idea of what love, quote unquote, should look like. But what love is and what I've noticed is it's actually actions. When I think of love, it's actually actions. So when I think about breaking this down, I really thought of six core concepts with some of those um, Summer have already has already mentioned. So when I think of love, this is what I come up with, unconditional. So it's not on the condition of, you know, being a certain size or being a certain weight or making a certain amount of money or showing up in the world a certain way or acting a certain way. It's unconditional. So we it, it has no conditions. And what I often see when it comes to this um, idea 
idea of loving our body. It's, it's, well, I love my body or I love myself or whatever up until this point, or I'm only going to love myself once I'm this way, which is really rooted in diet culture, right? So when we think about one of the core concepts is unconditional. So it's, it just is, it is, it's an action, right? The other thing would be respect. So if we have a hard time with liking things, because that's something that we're going to blow up as well, where it's not about always liking stuff, can you at least show yourself respect, which is the opposite of what you were saying somewhere with the disrespect? Can, how can we respect ourselves in this moment? So oftentimes it's like, well, I don't know how to love myself, right? now. Okay. So let's, let's back off of that for a moment. How can you show yourself respect? And sometimes that's a little bit easier to do because that's an action that we can actually take. The other thing would be acceptance. So that ties into all of this, right? It's about just accepting what is the other thing would be understanding and communication. You know, one of the biggest things that I notice when it comes from coming out of diet culture is our communication with ourselves, with our intuition, with our body, with our own wisdom, with our compassion, whatever it may be, that communication really like gets lost, right? We stop listening and we stop communicating back and forth and really having an open dialogue with ourselves and our bodies. So how can I listen? Am I hearing what my body's saying? Am I honoring what it's saying? What is my body actually saying to me? That's something easy that we can actually fall back to instead of having this idea of love. We can say, okay, how can I listen to my body or what am, what do I need to hear from my body right now? The other thing would be trust, which is such a big thing, right? And when we come from diet culture, diet culture completely obliterates our trust, right? We put, we literally hand over the keys and we're like, okay, I'm no longer going to trust my intuition. I'm no longer going to trust my gut instincts and what I know is best for me, my emotions, yada, yada. We start buying into the gurus or what have you. So the other thing would be trust. So how can I learn to start dabbling into trust and recultivating that trust? Because that's really something that needs to happen through this entire process. So on top of that, when we think of trust, that means letting go of the the unknown, right? Or allowing the unknown to exist and having faith that it's going to be okay and also giving up control, right? Because you can't trust something if you're trying to control it, right? So you have to let go of that illusion of control, which obviously, again, goes back to diet culture. And the last thing that I really think of when it comes to these actions of love is compassion. So versus once again, saying, you know, how can I love myself right now? How can I treat myself with respect and kindness and compassion? How can I do that? Sometimes when we break these things down, it's easier for us to really think of them as actions. And when we put all this together, for me, that's really symbolic of loving ourselves and loving our body. So that's what I really love these six core concepts. So yeah, that's, that's so all good. Yeah. That's Thank so you. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, if we talk about moving, moving into a place where you're able to do those things, like it's, it's a practice to be able to like to work to work on all of those things. And it feels different as you get to know yourself and as you cultivate that new relationship with with yourself. And so, you know, I always tell people, like, the first thing we want to do is just have you move away from from hating it, like really, you know, trying to get rid of that that blame, that disrespect, that shame, because all of that stuff is learned, like we weren't born with with any of that. And, and when we can drop the hate, and get to a place where we're a little more neutral or ambivalent, then that's such a better place to, to get to. And I and I'm really proud of people when they get to that point, because I almost think, like, that's really good given the culture we live in. <laughs> yeah. and, and just feeling more neutral and just not really thinking negatively about your body anymore. You know, so instead of going for like, quote unquote, loving it, like just aim to not think about it negatively so much and make that so much less and less <laughs> as time goes on. And then you can get to a point where you're able to appreciate what it does for you and different aspects of your body. But the first step is like, just get away from hating it. And, you know, that really comes from accepting that maybe you don't like it and being okay with that. And just starting to speak to yourself more compassionately and really realize that all of those negative thoughts were learned and none of them are those are your real thoughts. 
and starting to treat yourself like you matter because you're the one who has the capability to do that for yourself and you're the only one who can do that for yourself. And so I think ultimately, like when you're working with us, the goal is to get you to a place where you know that you're valuable and worthy regardless of how you look. And you really don't think about your body so much anymore. Like that's, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. So, you know, things that we teach at the retreat would be letting go of who you think you should be or how you think you should show up in the world, understanding your values, which Summer and I both have a lot of emphasis on values because it's so incredibly important. They really are kind of defining of who we really are. So when we can reconnect with who we are, we can kind of let that other shit go literally and figuratively, right? So, and then on top of that, knowing that you're more than a body, because really like that's ultimately what this work is about. So it's not about your body. It's about knowing that you're so much more than that. You have so much to offer, you know, to this world. And there's so much depth to you that is not like superficial whatsoever. And then then this also like just frees up so much space to be focusing on other things. So it's going to be taking the emphasis off of your body. So you can actually like fill your space, like metaphorically and literally mental space, all of that, fill that space with things that you actually care about that are going to give you fulfillment and purpose and passion and really just light you up. Like that's like really just the driving force behind all of this. So, you know, the end result of all of this is that it's all about messiness and being imperfect and, you know, just owning who you are. It's up and down and it's not thinking about your body so much. It's just more about living your life, being more present in your life and being able to do the shit that actually matters to you. Mm -hmm. And we really help you get connected to what that looks like for you, like where you're not showing up, where, you know, the values, when we talk about values, it's, it's really twofold. It's the things that give you a sense of fulfillment in your life. And it's the parts of you that when you are expressing them, you feel most authentic. And so that's, that's why they're such a foundational part of, of, the work that we do, because when you can identify what those things are, it makes it so much easier to acknowledge what's truly important to you, what boundaries you need to set for yourself, because the things that you you, you know what you need to honor, you know where you're not going to be compromised, compromised. And it also gives you this amazing framework to go and interact with people and live your life. Because when you know your values, it's it's much easier to then not take criticism or judgment personally, because you can acknowledge like, all right, this person just shares different values than me. And that's, that's a real kind of fundamental piece of the equation, too. Because I think often we just think like, there's something wrong with me. Why doesn't this person like me? Um, instead of just knowing like, all right, I'm this person, this is what I believe, this is who I am. And they have different beliefs and values than me. And that's, that's okay, we're entitled to that. And not everyone is going to like you. And that is okay. Yes. Yep. So is there anything else that we want to add to this like first myth here? That was so awesome. I feel like we really, so I guess what we need to say is the truth of, of body positivity is that, you know, having a core belief that all bodies, including yours are valuable and worthy. And of course, you know, true body positivity, cause we reflected this back onto body positivity, but true body positivity is about, you know, liberation, feminism, and fat acceptance. So, um, that's definitely themes throughout our entire retreat as well. Yeah, but yeah, big time. I think, you know, when we're talking about it, I think the word body positivity gets kind of convoluted and it's it turns into this exploration of the self and like wanting to love your body. But it, the true meaning of that word is really that it's, you know, that it's a social justice movement. So it's, and it, like Sarah said, it's rooted in feminism and fat acceptance. And that's, that's really important to acknowledge. And it's important because our body image is the result of those social oppressions. You know, things like sexism, racism, ableism, classism, ageism, size discrimination, all of those things form the beliefs that we have about ourselves and the beliefs that we have about bodies. And it's it's really important to understand that framework on our on our personal journeys too. And also to, you know, fight for the liberation of of others and, and make changes in this culture that are gonna benefit um, all bodies. Yes. Yes, yes. This episode of Fearless Rebel Radio is brought to you by Superfit Hero. I am so excited to partner with Superfit Hero. When I asked you, my dear audience, which brands to reach out to, many of you mentioned them. 
Superfit Hero makes the best leggings on the planet. They were designed after four months of fit testing with athletes of different body sizes. Superfits don't slip, fall, roll, or pinch. They are squat proof, sweat proof, and have great big pockets. Best of all, they are size inclusive and they feature diverse models and body types on their website. So you can see how their stuff will fit on your actual body. I love their website. Superfit Hero, designed for confidence, made with love in Los Angeles. Go to superfithero.com and save 15% off your first order by entering the code SUMMER, that's S-U-M-M-E-R, at checkout. So I guess we should head into the second myth, which would be, you know, being body positive. And we kind of talked about this a little bit, but being body taught positive means that you're good all the time. Yeah. Yes. And so I think I feel like that's kind of like almost like that magical thinking that I was mentioning before, you know, where it's this pressure to feel good about yourself every day to to never have self doubt to, uh, you know, quote, unquote, be positive vibes, which I know you've written a post about before, which <laughs> oh, so I'm yeah, sure you'll posi- positive you'll talk vibe about drive. That. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's it's the you know, it's kind of this belief that it's linear and consistent, you know, that once you do this work, then you're good, you shouldn't have a bad day, you should be confident. And it's, it's applying, you know, this perfectionist way of thinking to this work. And it's, it's also being a perfectionist, because it's making us strive to like every part of ourselves. And that really sets us up for feelings of inadequacy and failure. And so that's that we want to avoid all of that. <laughs> like, we don't want we want to reject all of those concepts. We, we want to acknowledge that we are deeply layered and dynamic and there have a wide range of thoughts, days, emotions, like everything is just always ebbing and flowing. I mean, I don't know how many of you can talk about a day where you like cried and laughed in the same day. Like, I feel like that's every day for me. <laughs> so That was today for me. I, I cried earlier when I went to the Feminist Museum, actually, so, <laughs> which is also in Asheville, by the way. So just saying, if you're going to be coming to the retreat, you could go to the Feminist Museum. So, you know. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. But yeah, we're, di- we're, we're these dynamic beings and it does not mean that you are good good all the time. Like that's, we don't need more expectations on ourselves. We don't need more pressure. You know, when we can welcome in all of the different facets of our being, all of the different pieces of ourselves, because we're always going to have tender spots. We're always going to have parts of ourselves that are more sensitive to judgment or criticism uh, or certain situations. You know, when we can welcome those in and accept them, it just makes life so much easier because then we're not fighting against who we are. Yeah, exactly. And we're not fighting against emotions, you know, because we are all emotional human beings. And just like we said earlier, it's not about dismissing discomfort or feeling like you're going to be feeling great all the time or feeling quote unquote confident all the time or whatever. It's about allowing the ebbs and flows that actually happen because you are a human being um, and being able to meet yourself where you are in that moment. So coming back to that positive vibes tribe, uh, which, you know, really when we think of the idea that being body positive or accepting your body means that you're going to be good all the time. Um, this positive vibe tribes really, it, it dismisses our humanity. If you think about it, like the work that you do here and with this work that we talk about, sometimes it does bring up some emotional discomfort. And what happens more more times than not is a lot of us have been using dieting or reaching for perfection as a way of avoiding emotional discomfort. So if we really are trying to move away from that and really embrace imperfection and our whole human self and the multi-layered dimension of who we are as a person, we have to be willing to, like Summer was saying, go with the flow of what we are doing and meeting ourselves right now. So it really does dismiss our humanity. And it's also really exclusionary to individuals that have have, um, mental health issues. And it's just another avoidance behavior because I don't know about you, but uh, for me personally, some of my most deepest healing moments and my aha moments were when I wasn't really feeling positive. It was just, you know, it might have been a little uncomfortable. And when we think about moving outside of your comfort zone and, um, you know, 
expanding and taking up more space and all of those things, sometimes you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable when it comes to standing up for yourself and putting a boundary in place. Sometimes it may feel a little uncomfortable when it comes to practicing and being in our values and speaking up all this stuff that really is about just like wholeheartedly, authentically, and unapologetically showing up in your life that comes with some discomfort. And if you're going to be relying on this idea that it's going to be positive all the time, then you're really just going to be setting yourself up to not, it just like double downs. It just double downs on perfection and it doesn't really help you in the long run. Mm -hmm. I've had people, I've heard people say, I feel like I'm failing at body positivity. And it's like, that's just not even a thing. Like then you're double downing on shame. Like that's, it's, there's, you can't fail at creating a relationship with yourself. Like you, you know, it's that you're, you're obviously putting an expectation on yourself that you're going to feel good all the time. And, and that's just, it's so unrealistic. Like I, I think we need to really understand that, uh, so this is the this is the metaphor I like to use when I talk about emotions. So I know I just kind of let that sentence drop and I'm starting a new one, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I like to think about emotions like keys on a piano. And if we're only limiting the soundtrack of our life to a small percentage of those keys, it's going to be lacking so much depth. Whereas when we can play the full range of that piano, the soundtrack of our lives is going to be so much richer. And so, you know, when we allow ourselves to experience whatever we're feeling, you know, you can just be curious with it. Uh, Emotions aren't like they don't define who you are. But if we can allow ourselves to experience those feelings and those emotions, it allows for the more positive ones, like when we can actually nurture the, you know, kind of the negative sides of ourselves, or the more quote, unquote, negative feelings that we have, it allows for us to experience the positive ones more intensely. And uh, I kind of like to think of feelings like food, like, you know, food is just neutral, food is just food, feelings are just feelings, like all feelings are neutral. It's it's they're really just energies in our body. But, you know, when we can welcome those different energies in and learn from them. And and like you said, like, sometimes when we're doing these acts of of self love, it's going to feel hard. Like one of the questions I always ask people is what discomfort are you willing to welcome with that with that decision? Like, are you going to be okay with the discomfort that comes along with that? Because it's important to acknowledge that in order to really be who we are, we're going to have some discomfort as well. Yeah. And really emotions as well, the way that I like to think of them too, is it just provides us with information to be curious with. It just provides us with be like, huh, that's interesting. Like what might that be about? Did somebody, was my boundary, you know, not respected? Did I feel like my values were, you know, kind of stomped on? Like what's really going on here? So rather than attaching stories, because that's oftentimes what we do, just seeing it as a very neutral thing of, huh, this is just providing me with information. And, you know, when it comes to this idea that you're all good all the time, not only are we talking about positive vibe tribe, but also that, you know, you are going to like everything and everything is going to be good. And this is a linear, you know, situation and it looks a certain way. And these are all rooted in expectations, which are upholding this perfectionist mentality. And that's something that we really want to let go of. So that's definitely something that we work on. And we teach you is how to let that shit go and make space for acknowledging all parts of ourselves, even the parts that you may not like. And yes, this can absolutely reflect back onto your body too, because I think there's this idea that when we become quote unquote body positive, or we accept our body, that we have to like everything about ourselves. We have to think positively about everything about ourselves. And and I'm here to say, I think we're both here to say that this is about creating space and making room with saying, it's okay if you don't like your stomach or your earlobe or, you know, whatever that it's okay. Because if you, if you like force this idea of body of positivity or having to love it or whatever, it's not really the reality of the situation and you can't make space for that. So it's about creating space, acknowledging it, and then being able to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I always, you know, it's interesting because I always ask people, what's something you know, you're not good at and you're okay with. And, you know, maybe it's something like parallel parking or in my case, running, or drawing. You know, most of us can identify something about ourselves that we don't like, 
and that we're okay with. The reason why we stress so much about our body or how productive we are or our ability to, you know, do everything perfectly is because of the cultural expectations that we carry. Like there's no cultural expectation to be a good parallel parker. So I think most of us can let go of the fact that, you know, if we're not good at parallel parking. So I think that's that's an important piece to acknowledge too, is just that, you know, like all these huge expectations that we're putting on ourselves to like everything about ourselves, or, you know, conversely, to change who we are, because we don't think we're good enough. It's not your fault. Like all of that stuff is learned. And and so we can choose to reject those standards and start to look at aspects of ourselves that we don't like in the same way that we look at our, our ability to parallel park, which I'm actually a really good parallel parker, just for the record. It's like one of my and hidden I'm talents. And I'm really not. <laughs> It's one of my hidden talents. <laughs> I am really not. So Summer will be parking all parallel parking uh, cars necessary when we are at the retreat, just in case you needed yeah, that. But, but if you can kind of think about your stomach in that way or whatever part of you, you know, I think that that's, it can be a helpful perspective to just be like, okay, I can accept that I, you know, I'm not good at this or I don't like this about myself. And it's about taking other pieces of ourselves that we've made to that we've been made to feel very sensitive about and treating that in kind of the same in the same regard, knowing that we're still going to be living in a culture that is trying to make us feel like we're not good enough. Right. And ultimately, like how often are so for for me, since I'm not a good parallel parker, uh, like <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that. And when Summer asks that question, you know, what is something that you're not good at? You probably don't spend a lot of time, you know, space, energy, emotions, like you probably don't spend a lot of time on that, right? So ultimately, that's what we really want to reclaim for you when it comes to your body is ultimately not spending so much damn time, like, thinking about it so you can spend that time doing other stuff in your life yes. or just resting, not doing anything, just being, just simply being. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good. Is there anything else on that? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Okay. So myth number three is that self-care is all about bubble baths, indulgences, and pretending you're Mariah Carey. <laughs> You wanted to talk about the, that myth? Yeah, I almost like busted out in some Mariah Carey singing there. Oh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So yeah, so, you know, self care is so interesting the way that we have had it portrayed to us, right? So we oftentimes see self care as something that's really fun, you know, like bubble baths or getting a pedicure or getting a massage or whatever. So fun and frivolous that it has to be related to spending money. Like I'm going to go and buy myself X, Y, and Z, whether that's, you know, going and getting a new wardrobe, which absolutely can be a form of self care, but that's not necessarily what true self care is about, or it doesn't have to be what it's about. Um, the other thing that I see a lot and this is very, very common, is that the myth that self-care always has to feel good. And that's one that I absolutely like love 100% to blow up because it's not always about feeling good. And I'll dive into that in a little bit. The other thing that's really common, especially with women, um, is that we have to earn it. And I think this is the social conditioning, especially with women, that we have to be able to earn, you know, our care. And if we think about like diet culture, it's about like this whole, like earning your food, blah, 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 blah. Like this is all social conditioning from what we've been taught. And I see this more with women than what I do anything else that we have to earn our self-care. The other thing is that it looks a certain way. So the idea that self-care is about bubble baths and indulgences and, you know, chocolate and, um, what have you. The other thing is that it's also only about your physical self, which it's not because we're not just these physical, like bags of bones and skin and muscle and joints and what have you like there's so much depth to who we are we have a we're men, we have mental space and emotions and there's just so much depth to who we are so those are the biggest myths that I see are there any that you see that you wanted to add on to that summer I mean I feel like you named all of them that that I see pop up as well, like just exactly as you said. And, you know, the truth is that it's, it, you know, it's kind of the opposite of a lot of those. So, you know, it's, it's not just physical, it's looking after our whole being self care is about tending to our emotional, our spiritual, our mental and our physical well being. And looking at it in that way, I think, you know, culturally, we, 
we neglect our mental health and it it comes on the back burner over and over again. Like we're obsessed with like whether or not we ate vegetables and yet, you know, we're not talking about like, okay, like, do you need to talk to someone? Do you need therapy? Like, are you, uh, you know, are you overworked? Are you not getting enough help? Like, do you have bound, do you need to set some boundaries in your life? Like, there's all of these things that I think are so much more important and that have a way bigger impact on our overall well being that culturally we often neglect. And so it's so important, you know, like when we, when we look at self care and when we do this at the retreat, where we look at it in the different buckets and we have you think about different things and your needs in all of those in all of those different buckets. And overall, I think a simple way to look at self care is really just to think about it as showing yourself that you matter. You know, if we think about self worth, it's, you know, knowing that we're valuable and worthy, then we have to think about, okay, what kind what kinds of uh, things support that. And that's really what self care is. It's about supporting that belief. It's about showing yourself that you're valuable. It's about showing yourself that you're worthy. And it's that simple. So it's almost like asking yourself, like, how did I show myself that I matter today? You know, what percentage of my day was about giving to other people versus what percentage of my day was spent showing myself that I matter, um, taking time to recharge, you know, one of the metaphors I like to use, because I think, I think that so often we're, and, you know, I think we'll talk about this in a second, but we, we're just trying to kind of keep our heads above water, like we were, or, or we're trying to prevent ourselves from completely drowning instead of really keeping us afloat, which I know you're going to use like a water metaphor in a minute. But, you know, like I like to think about it as th- thinking about ourselves like a battery, like we can't run on an empty battery. You know, if you think about your phone, being in low power mode sucks. Like you're like, oh my God, I have no energy. Like I can't do anything. (laughs) I can only do this one thing and then I'm done. You got to think about yourself that way. Like you've got to keep yourself topped up and you've got to keep yourself recharged. And it's, it's really about nurturing that relationship that we have with ourselves. Yeah. And I think that the other thing with, and definitely in alignment with that is that it's a act of self-preservation, right? So when we think about showing up continuously in our lives, it really is that, that comes because of self-care, right? Like this is how you recharge. And it, it's definitely not about like putting a bandaid on things when you're exhausted. It's not about like, Oh, I'm it's, <laughs> what is that movie? I just got this, um, Oh, the hero six. It's not that big guy. Remember that guy that he's like powering down and then he's like petting the cat. It's not like, oh, okay, now I need to go plug myself in. It's about continuously showing up and self-preserving yourself. So the way that I like to look at it and what Summer was kind of suggesting is when it comes to self-care, the way that I like to look at it compared to coping mechanisms, because I think these two kind of get a little bit mixed up, but self-care, if you think of it, is you're in this big body of water, right? Like this is quote unquote life, if you will. And you're floating on this flotation device, which is self-care. And what we have to do is we have to continuously kind of reinflate the the flotation rotation device to make sure we're kind of going with the ebbs and flows of the waves, you know, of life, the emotions, blah, 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 what have you. Because if we don't continuously put air into the flotation device and it loses air, we're eventually going to sink to the bottom. And guess what hangs out at the bottom when we're not taking care of ourselves, when we're not taking a time to recharge our batteries or do what we need to do our inner critics, right? Like that's when our inner critics get to be like the loudest, right? Is when we're not really caring for ourselves. So what the way that I see inner critics in this specific scenario is that they're kind of like the sharks that are like hanging out at the bottom of the ocean. It's really difficult when you don't have a lot of energy to kind of like fight off sharks, right? So we really want to continuously give ourselves care so we can just stay on top of the water and go with the waves. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, but that's really how I see self-care is the continuous kind of replenishing of ourselves so we can keep showing up in our lives, however that means for us. And sometimes that's not always comfortable and sometimes it's not always fun. You know, like one thing that is a myth is that self-care always continuously like feels good, right? Like again, the bubble baths. But when I think of self-care, it's also about 
feeling the difficult emotions. It's about, you know, maybe going to the gynecologist. Like, I don't know about you all, but um, I don't particularly like having a speculum shoved up my vagina. Um, but that's a form of self-care <laughs> for me. So I'm just saying, sometimes it means saying no. Sometimes it means having criticism happen because you're standing in your boundaries. All of that stuff, sometimes it doesn't feel good, but it really is an act of self-care, which again, ties back to understanding your self-worth. And if anything, self-care is advocating that you really are enough as you are and you're worthy of it and that you matter in your life. Yeah, totally. And like to that point about it not always feeling good, I think I think we sometimes turn to self-care when we're feeling down with the expectation that the feelings of discomfort are going to be resolved. You know, it, we think it's going to reverse the emotion. It's like I'm having a bad body day, so I went and did X, but I still feel bad. And it's like, well, Self-care can be a good distraction, but we don't want it to be using it as a tool of emotional avoidance or expecting it to reverse negative experiences or emotions like coming back to myth number two it's it you know it's it's okay to have days like that and you can do self-care and still feel bad like that's you know the point of it isn't to eliminate negative emotions or anything like that it's really about you know treating yourself with respect and kindness and compassion and showing yourself that you matter Absolutely. So some of the stuff that we really dive into, you know, at the retreat is really getting clear and individual like toolkit for you. Like what does self-care look like for you? What does it feel like for you? What do you need? Because it's so individual. What I need is going to be different. What summer needs and what we need is going to be different than what you need. Um, so it's individual. So we really help you get clear about, you know, what's a toolkit that I can have kind of in my back pocket that I can make maybe implement some things. Definitely, we pay attention to our mental and emotional sides of self-care because like Summer was saying, that definitely is one that gets on put on the back burners quite frequently because we always think of self-care as being physical and it's not because we're way deeper than that. The other thing that we do is we really get past those barriers and limiting beliefs. You know, sometimes what I see frequently is that especially when it comes to women that have children is that like we put our self-care on the very back burner, right? Like we're always giving this energy out to other people and we don't do it to ourselves. So it, it's about like getting past barriers, whether it's that it has to look a certain way or that I don't deserve it or, you know, I can't afford it or whatever, because we break down any of those thoughts that may be holding you back, um, whether it's related to perfectionism or being a superwoman or having your shit all together or what have you. So you can really start caring for yourself in a compassionate, kind and respectful manner. And then also we talk to you about what happens when self care, you know, kind of slips because that does happen, right? And how can we start to kind of recultivate that for ourselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And all of that is done in a way that you have tangible things to think about and say yes to and say no to going forward. So like all of these different things are things that we unpack at the retreat. And what's really cool is that the last thing that we do is kind of like a closing ceremony where we, I don't want to give too many details away, but it's just, it's really awesome. And it just seals the deal on everything here. And it's like this amazing experience where you are committing to the things that you're going to carry forward. And, um, really identifying as your badass self. That's all I'm going to say about it. Unless you want yeah. to say something more about it. No, I just think that, you know, one thing that I think Summer and I really help you do is, you know, we can talk about this stuff. You can listen to podcasts, you can read the books, but what we do is we actually help you kind of develop an action plan, right? Because that's how this, we really help you develop an action plan so you can create these shifts in your life. Um, and you can take this forward in your life because this stuff does go deeper than just body image, right? So that's the other kind of amazing thing about this retreat is that you can carry and customize these tools to wherever you are in your life and whatever it may be that's popping up. Um, and that's what's so awesome about it is that we actually have like a re like literally a toolkit where it's like, okay, I, I can handle this. This is what I can help myself do or whatever, rather than just kind of intellectually understanding it, we help you develop an action plan. And in all reality, like that's where the shifts really do occur. Mm -hmm. I think the other huge thing is just that we, we don't always see our own shit. Like we, like myself, even like I have a coach because I don't see my own shit. Like I... <laughs> 
I know you need someone to help help you see things in a different way, help you reframe stuff. And, uh, and I think that that's huge. That's like the, the, you know, the, the group setting is really powerful for that, too. Because when you hear about other people's experiences, you're like, oh, yeah, like, I do that, too. Or I experience that, too. Or, oh, wow, like, you're taking away all these other awesome things to help you carry forward, like more insights about who you are and yourself, uh, greater self exploration, because of that group setting. And obviously, because of like the, the one-on-one coaching with Sarah and I that happens happens during the retreat too. Yeah. And also like you get that compassion that sometimes, you know, ca- compassion is something interesting. It's, it's definitely something that we have to develop and practice. And it's much easier for people to give compassion to other people. So you have this group of individuals to be like, well, wait a minute, they offer this compassion. It's just so beautiful to sit and experience because the, the, the people that come, they're, they're very wise, like they're, they're compassionate and wise and kind and so loving. And it's so great to see that among them. And also, you know, they're able to offer different perspectives of what as well from wherever they may be on their journey, which is really great. Yeah, like our, our, it actually reminds me of when we were all sitting around and I think the conversation came up where people were like, I can't believe you don't feel good in your body. Like, you're so amazing. Like, and everyone yeah. started saying that to each other. And it was like, you know, like, it was just about, you know, everyone could see the beauty in everybody else but themselves. But through that experience, people were able to realize like, wow, I'm so hard on myself. Like, there's really, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm yeah. good. Yeah. And also like, I'm, I'm not alone with these feelings. And I think that when we can understand that this isn't just an individual like thought process, this really is a collective thing. We can really start to understand that this really is because of social and cultural conditioning. Um, so it's not our fault, you know, and the great thing about it is that we can make these major shifts to really reframe this stuff and ultimately just live the shit out of our lives, you know, Mm -hmm. and do go forward with doing things that we enjoy and spending time and, you know, just, just coming back home, really. Yeah, yeah, 100%. All right. Anything else you want to add? No, besides that, you know, just, I think that if you are on the fence of coming, you know, I would encourage you to come if you can. It really is a life-changing experience. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a host, um, but I, I know this from the people that were there. And I know that for me and myself it was um, because it's just such a unique experience to be in a space like that. And I know that you're going to be able to take away so much from it and gain so much from this um, experience for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think you're going to get so much more out of it than you probably imagine and just have a really great break for yourself. Like this is like kind of a huge act of self care to just take this time for yourself in this incredibly beautiful setting where you can be in nature and be around other people and have this transformative experience that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Yeah, like what a way, you know, when we talk about self worth, like what a way to really like stand and say, I'm worthy. You know what I mean? Like that's such a huge way to be like, I'm I'm worthy and I'm gonna do this for myself. Mm-hmm. It's so big. Yeah. But don't come if you don't like to have fun. Not much. Sure. Yeah. Don't just- <laughs> And if you don't like dance parties and... Uh, Wait, that's yeah, okay, because, actually. If, well, y- like, if you don't like dancing, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. But just know that I'm going to bust a move. I am um, too. Pretty frequently. And I might bust out some singing as well. Um, there's just a whole... I'm going to let my freak flag fl- fly. So just be prepared. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, there's some good dancing videos from last year. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of really good things from last year. It was so fun. So <laughs> fun. I've got moves to make everybody jealous. Not. <laughs> <laughs> good times. Yes. All right. So you can find out more at reclaimretreat.com. Early bird price ends January 30th. So definitely take advantage of that. And then doors close in their finality not too long after that. I think March 1st, did we say? I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I will something like that. It's all on the website. Definitely. Yeah. But yeah, definitely early bird closes. So if you want to, you know, try to get that price, go ahead and get it before January 30th. And if you have any questions, like any hesitations, any concerns, any questions, you can definitely reach out to myself or summer and we'd be more than happy to talk to you about that. Yeah. Oh, we keep the group small too. I don't think we mentioned that. It's like 10 people. 
Yeah. Yeah. 10 or 12 at the most. But um, it was 10 the last year. It's And so it's very intimate. You get lots of one-on-one time. It's perfect that way. Yeah. And there's plenty of space in the house. The house is awesome. Summer hasn't seen it yet, but since it's in my hometown, I got a chance to see it. And it's it's freaking awesome, guys. Like <laughs> there's a whole downstairs area that is just like could be filled with shenanigans if we wanted it to be. So there's just going to be a lot of really great things happening. It's going to be like MTV's real world. It is. <laughs> so, Except not that, at I all. Hope that, I hope that it's not like Big Brother and there's like, you know, the cameras. No, there definitely isn't. But wouldn't that be so interesting to like watch us in our shenanigans? Because we we are goofy, I must say. Yeah. Which I appreciate and love. Yeah, it's good. We're even better in real life. True story. <laughs> All right. Well, that's where we'll wrap it up. Wrap it up. Come on to the Reclaim Retreat. Rock on, sister. See ya. That conversation was so fun to record. You can find all the links mentioned, including the two past episodes where Sarah and I shared the mic together at summerinandin.com forward slash 109. And I hope that I see you in person at the Reclaim Retreats. And if not, I will talk to you next week. Rock on. I'm Summer Inanin, and I want to thank you for listening today. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Summer Inanin. If you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review this show. I would be so grateful. Until next time, rock on. Rock on.